I'm going to interview you at owners. Best part of your job? I do sales. <laughs> I sell and sale. Okay. <laughs> at the moment, how many yachts you have? Oh, this one. This is mine and my partners, mm -hmm. and that's it. I have one. We're having another one coming. Just one. Do you have any education degree? I don't. Does money worth it? Yeah, you need money to live. You, you, you cannot live without money. What advice you would give to them? And the most important thing, don't ever get married. And if you do get married, then don't get divorced. I got it. You mean it's cheaper if you keep her? I'm now finished. Yo guys, season is open. You know how much I love boats, yachts, industry. And you know what is this about. I'm going to interview yacht owners. I'm not giving you any spoiler. Stay tuned, watch till the end. This will be the most important lesson for you. An amazing video. I'm sure you will enjoy. So stay tuned. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Let's go to interview them. Hello, your name, age, and what do you do for a living? I'm DJ Hurricane Hussein. Hi, you're a DJ. Many things, but a DJ is just one of them. How long you are doing in that industry? Oh, just a few years, not too long. I've done various different things throughout my life. I used to be a surgeon, I used to be a lawyer. Why did you decide for changing your career over to the DJ? Spend too long in life chasing in the process. You can destroy what's around you, so you've got to find the happy life as soon as you can. You know, there's a lot of expectations on people nowadays. Are you happy right now, what you are doing? Well, career-wise, indifferent. If I'm doing DJing, I'm really enjoying it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, career is just one small aspect of life and happiness is a... So being in your position, how much can we make per year? What, financially? Yeah. Well, I believe David Guetta is uh, pulling over 100 million a year, apparently. But uh, You are all the, also the same range? Oh, no, no, no. No, I'm just... Uh, you are in the seven. six or seven figures ranger right now? <laughs> this, no, absolutely not, no. And the most important thing for wealth, for longevity and for happiness is not to get married. Don't ever get married. It's the most stupid contract that was ever invented. And it is a contract. It's a business contract. So the rule number one, creating something that's good and keeping it there, is not to get married and if you do get married then don't get divorced whatever it takes not to get divorced don't do it but that's all good and well said because all you idiots out there are going to do it two-thirds of you are going to get stung you that's mean... it forget you forget the career thing yeah. you can have a modest career and build up wealth mm -hmm. you can have a great career and build up wealth if you get divorced you're going to be poor and it's not just the end divorce game it's all the legal fees that led to that and everything else so i got you mean it's cheaper if you keep her <laughs> that's a good saying yeah. you must have heard that before yeah, obviously <laughs> it's cheaper if you keep her uh, beside your djing activity do you have any business running out there no 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 now i'm just i just i'm not gonna go back there anymore i'm now finished just going to relax from now on well not relax i've got to try and uh, forge new relationships with my children which were absolutely decimated you can divorce people you can't divorce blood you know and however bad things get with children yeah they will always be there and if they're not there for you now they'll come back to you it's very rarely that that happens that people lose all contact with the children that's the most important thing how do you invest your money legal fees into divorce that's how it's all invested everything you know, went to the ex-wife, unfortunately, as much as squabbling and whatever else that goes on. Yeah, it all went in divorce. Mm -hmm. I got it. Well, thank you very much for your advice and don't for your married. time. <laughs> Again, emphasizing don't get married. Do not get married. Don't make the fatal mistake. Don't listen to the priest. It's all lies when you're in church. All those people who are there saying, we'll help you in tough times. It's liars. Don't do it. Hello, your name, age, and what do you do for a living? Hi, I am Conrad, 48 years old, and I am uh, a director in waste management in Malta. Wow, you are Maltese? Yes, I am. How did you start your company? Well, in 2009, we started uh, collecting steel, and then we moved on from ferries to non-ferries as well. And today we've got a 4,000 square meter facility in Malta, and we make shiploads of steel. We export steel to be recycled. We also do other non-ferries, such as copper and aluminium as well. Okay. What's the best, best part of your job? Uh, I do sales. I sell my product. Okay. That, is, that is the best part. Um, you are good at selling. 
I'm good at sales and I'm good at sailing. Okay, so. sailing also, <laughs> selling. <laughs> I, I sell and sail. Okay. <laughs> What is the secret of your selling part? Like, can you give us a little bit like a secret sauce of your selling skills? Well, I think perseverance together with selling a good product. That is the chemistry. So if it, you blend together a good product at a good price, and of course the market is what it is, recycling commodities, it's a buyer's market. So you have to give the buyer something which is basically what they're after. Okay, this is something you business but how did you come up with the idea how did you start your company we used to make um, prefabricated steel bars and we used to have the remnant part we had so much remnant parts that we sold the the remnant parts for scrap and once we sold that we liked the idea and we emphasized more on that and my my team they were moving on from prefabricated steel into waste management steel how long you are running that business the company is since 2009 but I've been there since 2013 Okay, and what is the longevity secret of your business? How you are keeping it running and how you are scaling your business? Scaling the business is by getting the right people on board the team. Mm -hmm. So you have to, when you're running the company, you have to get the good people, you have to trust them and you have to bank on their performance. Once that will be okay, then the company will strive. I believe in the team. It's the team that makes the company grow. We have some people in our community, they are in a corporate job, but they want to start their entrepreneurship journey. What is the best part of your entrepreneurship journey? You would tell to them? I would say find a good product, try to sell it to the people who need it most. They are the one who's going to give the best value for your product. And whatever the idea is, I think that sales is the most important part. Of they course. have to learn sales. Yes, I would, I would suggest that. I would suggest that go for sales and then if you can sell snow to Eskimos, then you're good. Then you're going to sell whatever you have. Wow, well, that's nice. And being in your position as a business owner, how much can we make per year? Well, it depends. I mean, it depends how big the company is. You can have two type, different types of, of businesses. One which goes for low profit but high revenue, mm -hmm. or else you could have low revenue and a high profit. It depends which, which what sort of commodity you're going to go for. Oh, uh, at the moment, your business, in what range? In Malta, I think we are one of the leaders in waste management, in mm -hmm. scrap metal, in, in ferrous waste management. Um, but yeah, of course, we can grow bigger. We can yeah. grow bigger. Yes. And at the moment, is it like a seven, eight figures? It's seven figures. Wow. How did you go from six to seven figures? I think when we expanded the, the management team, when we expanded the management team, the business expanded as well. Oh. So I think, yeah, I just that if you want to go like really big, the management structure has to be before you go big. Mm -hmm. Well, nice. And uh, how many yards you have at the moment? I have one, but we're going to we're, uh, we're having another one coming. So. <laughs> and I, actually, congratulations. Thank you. We're, so, we're going to try sailing as well. Part yeah. of power, we're going to try sailing as well. So nice. But why you need the second one? Probably because I will charter this one. Wow. So this one will go for chartering. And that makes sense. Is it your investment or spending? It's my it's my spending. It's not investment. You, it's very difficult to invest. I, I'm going to try with chartering, but I don't, I don't think I could make money out of it. But you know, I'm going to give it a shot. You're just enjoying by spending. Yeah, exactly. That is yeah. that is. I'm, I'm enjoying spending. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense, actually. Or in our community, people want to start a business doing what you do. What advice you would give to them? For opening a business, think thoroughly. In today's world, I would think thoroughly because if you are good, first I would try to work with, with a big company, see what the salary would be, see what the package is. If you are happy with that, don't move on to business. If you think you're going to go for business, then go for something big. So, you know, I mean, I wouldn't go um, to have my own business instead of a salary. I would not do that. I would go for salary. Um, but if you could be good, that you will be like really big in what you're going to do, then yes, then take the plunge and do it. Is that uh, you are only focusing one product and you are scaling it or you are diversifying it? No, I will keep to what I'm doing because that's what I can do best. So I wouldn't, I don't know, I wouldn't go for something which I'm not so sure of. Maybe I'm a little bit old style, yeah? I would stick to what I have and mm -hmm. keep focusing and try to expand into something which is related. Then yes, I would do it. Hello, your name, age, and what do you do for a living? I am Frank Saliba. I am 73 years old and I am retired at the moment, but I am a director also. Director in what company or what were you doing before uh, retirement? FS Engineering and Plastic Limited. Okay. And uh, what were you doing generally in your company? What was your position as a director? What were you were doing? Well, practically everything. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I started the company. Mm -hmm about uh, 40 years ago. It's uh, my own company. I don't have any other shares from other uh, sources. We do everything by ourselves. Hey, uh 
whatever we can do, we do. For what industry was it? It is, uh, at the moment, it is uh, packaging. How did you start with that company? I started as a mold maker, doing uh, molds. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we continued on injection moldings. And now we are only on injection molding. We're doing uh, food packaging. Do you know what is the secret of longevity in the business, keeping it more than 30 years? A lot of businesses are going out of the business after three, four, five years, but your business survived more than 30 years and still uh, in the business. Because it is my own, uh, my own company. Eh? Mm -hmm. We try to survive. Mm -hmm. At the moment, that's what we're doing. And we're trying to survive. Cause, uh, Being in your position, how much could we expect for making money? Uh, the most we do is, uh, is better. Eh? We are expecting six, seven figures per year. No, less than that. At the moment, for sure, it's less than that. <laughs> and do you remember what's the most amount of money you have generated in a single year? I don't know these figures. Uh, at the moment, how many yachts you have? How many? Yachts. Yachts? Yeah. Only oh, this one. Only this one, yeah? yeah. Uh, can you give us a range? How much is it going at the moment in the market? In the market, it's about 200,000. What made you to choose this decision, to make this decision for uh, to buying one? To, I've had another boat before. Mm -hmm. I sold it to buy this one. It's because it's more comfortable. And uh, since we're getting, getting gold, I want to be more comfortable. For people in their 20s want to start in your business, molding business or packaging business, mm -hmm. what advice you would give to them? It's a bit hard because plastic is cut, cannot be used anymore. And uh, I think it's if they find another way of doing business, mm -hmm. I think it's better. Hello, your name, age, and what do you do for a living? I'm David, I'm 45, and I am an architect and a sailor. How did you start with that career? It's a long story, but basically my parents taught me how to sail when I was very young, and I went to school and learned architecture. What do you mean, like a sailing? Uh, what is this about? So, general, what do you do? So I work as a general manager for a company which sells boats, mm -hmm. and previously to that I used to work in a company which designs buildings as an architect. That, that's nice. So are you are a general manager in the company, yes? Yes. And do you remember what is the most amount of money you sell for the boat or yacht? I don't remember. Can we break it down a little bit? Like how much can we make in your position doing what you do? The yachting industry has many positions. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy business to get started in. If you work hard and sell a lot of boats, you can make a decent living from it. How can we start in that industry? Like being in, a, in our 20s, just we want to be in the yachting industry. What should we do? So there are different, like in any industry, there are different parts of the industry. There's sales, there's maintenance, marketing. I think in any industry, there's correlations. So like I started off as an architect and moved into yachting. I knew about the, the business and I learned certain skills as an architect and I transposed from one industry to the other. With uh, starting off in anything, you need what you need is enthusiasm. Enthusiasm and a good attitude to learn. So I think anyone who loves either the industry that he wants to work in, he or she wants to work in, or loves what he is good at can make a career. You started with uh, selling boats and yachts or how did you start? I started with architecture and then this opportunity came up. I wanted to move out of architecture and I started in the company. I was thrown in at the deep end and so, uh, at the moment, you are dealing with uh, high-end, high-class people and also solving their problems. You are selling to them or different kind of things you are doing, yes. But what is the common trait of uh, successful people that make them wealthy? Well, I think it's about perseverance and enjoying what you do. I've had architecture clients and both clients, and my opinion is the successful ones have a good attitude and know what they do and they persevere in what they do. Obviously, there's also luck which comes into it. Some of them may have got lucky earlier than others, but you need a mix of the three. How many yachts you have at the moment? Myself. Yeah. This is mine and my partners, mm -hmm. and that's it. But uh, we want to know a little bit about your yacht also. What model is it, or if we want to buy it, how much we have to expect to spend? My boat is a Swan 44 from 1973. She's an old boat. Prices vary depending on the condition, but the boats that I sell are new boats, and they're Beneteau, Lagoon and Swan and you can start off a smaller sailing boat will sell for around our smallest boat which we have available is a 37 footer mm -hmm. and that starts off at around 250,000 and the biggest the bigger models go up to the millions the biggest one which we would have sold would be over 5 million
Hello, your name, age, and what do you do for a living? So my name is Richard, I'm 41, and I'm a real estate developer. How long you are doing it? Uh, for the past six years. Previously, I was in the car business, uh, but now I'm doing real estate. That's it, basically, for the time being. Car business was your own business? Yes. What were you doing? Family, selling? A family business, yes. Selling, operating, everything, basically. Why did you change, or did you sell your business? I sold my share of my business, yes. How much was it? Uh, it's confidential. Okay, but can we give a range? Is that more than seven figures? Uh, yes. Ah, okay, but what, we mean, what made you to change your industry to the real estate? I wanted more freedom, more time to myself. Real estate giving you more freedom? Yes, because it's passive income. And at the moment, uh, how many units you are owning? At the moment, I have, again, it's confidential, but I have a substantial amount. You are just developing it for the clients and also both, keeping some both. for you? Both, exactly. Okay. I keep and I sell. Can we give us some insight, like how this business is going? Because people don't know the real estate development, and can you give us some example and also the situation when you start in that industry what is we are expecting well when I started the market was uh, volatile because you know it was like still starting to get powerful and strong but now I think the business in Malta when it comes to property in the past 25 35 years the price of property has never decreased it's always increased so it's basically better than money in the bank that's mm -hmm. why most Maltese invest in property do you invest your money only real estate real estate and uh, how many yachts you have? Just one. Just one. Uh, yes. When did you buy it? Uh, I bought my first one in 2010 and this is my second one which I bought in 2019. When you were in the car industry business yes. Yes. and you bought one and then when you yes. shift to the real estate? We changed to another. What made you to buy the second one? Ah, well, I love this year, I love the time on the water. It's my passion, you know, I, I love it. It's what I live for. Okay, what model is it? It's if we a, don't know anything about yacht? No, it's a Fairline 50 GT. It's a co very common boat. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the range in the market? The range is in the size or... Size and the, the, the price. Cost, yeah. A half a million. But uh, how you are keeping it for the maintenance and also like uh, what do you do mainly? Yes, uh, the maintenance is basically I do most of the stuff. I wash, I, I clean. I have a cleaner as well, but sometimes I do it myself. Mm -hmm. Like this morning, we just came back. It costs maybe 20,000 a year to run. People want to buy a yacht. What should they do to be able to afford it? Uh, you need, uh, in my opinion, passive income. That's the way to go. Okay. It gives you time, it gives you freedom. Mm -hmm. That's how what I understand. And that's my philosophy of life, freedom. For people in their 20s, they want to escape from the matrix to do their mm -hmm. own financial freedom journey. What okay. advice you would give to them? I would advise them to seek a job which is which is going to give you freedom. And then when they're young, in their 20s, today it's very important that they get a degree from, from the university because employers won't even look at them if they don't have a degree to start off with. If they want to be different, they need to have some sort of financial background to to start off either they have to promote something and get you know investors on their side something of the sorts if they want to escape the matrix do you have any education degree I don't I was uh, I started working in the family business when I was 16 I worked for 21 years in the family business and then as I said I we, we moved on basically okay and when you are doing with your real estate, of course, yes. you have some clients, they are high class people also. Of but course. how you are dealing with them, what's the common traits? We don't know. Or is there any misconception about the millionaires? But it's not true. No, I think that the common traits with people who invest in real estate is they want a, a very good, a very well finished product. That's all I could say. If you, if you offer a good end product, you're going to sell your properties for sure. And uh, for our community. Yes. Uh, is there any book or podcast you would recommend or financial and personal development advice? No, start young, invest when you're young, use the bank's money when you're young. That's the best, the best advice I can give. What do you mean? Can you break it down, the bank's money? The bank's money, because the younger you are, you have a longer term to settle your debts. So they give you a better rate, you know, you can get substantial amounts if you have some collateral always. So that's what I would do. Invest when you're young. So when you're 45, 50, you can relax and enjoy your life. Is money worth it? Is money worth it? Yeah. Yeah, you need money to live. You, you, you cannot live without money. You need to generate an income, some kind of, you know, you need money to survive. Can't do anything without money. You can't even catch a, a taxi or, okay, in Malta we have free transport. But I mean, <laughs> I don't know what people are, are using it. Probably foreigners are using it, most of them Maltese. Mm -hmm.